So we have this large plywood pallet that we would like to turn into a human size pin art wall using our CNC router and the tools we made on this channel earlier. We are going to face many challenges, try out the CNC technique called tiling and hopefully create something that will look great and feel satisfying. It's going to be work intensive so we better get started. The first task was to take apart the pallet. I used a crowbar to remove the stingers and during this process I realized the first challenge of this project will be dealing with the poor quality plywood. I know it's a pallet ply and of course it has some dents, a couple of knot holes and some footprints on it. But those aren't the biggest issues. The lamination is. It's most noticeable on the sides of the panel. But after removing one of the stingers I realized that the whole sheet might be delaminating. Therefore I decided to remove the most damaged parts of the sheet. Unfortunately, this also meant the pin art wall would be smaller than I hoped to make. However, the sheet that I was left with after the circular saw cuts were still too big to fit on our CNC router. Luckily for us, there is an approach called tiling that allows you to cut bigger components on your CNC router than the table's work surface. The idea of this approach is simple. You just divide the project that you are trying to make into multiple tiles that are the same or smaller size than your CNC's work surface. Then you would load your material on the CNC router, cut the first tile, slide the material further, cut the next tile and so on till your component is made. This is a great way to maximize your CNC's potential. However, you have to be very mindful of all the cuts you make and the order you do the cutting operations. And if you're not careful enough, this is what can happen. Yep, I accidentally cut the hold down screw. When positioning the material on the CNC, I forgot that I offset the operations by 3 centimeters. Oh well, life is life. I had to replace the router bit and repeat the contour cut, and the first tile was done. But in this case, the sheet was too big for me to slide through the CNC, so I rotated by 180 degrees and used the positioning dowels to ensure that the cuts from the first tile match the cuts from the second tile. Let me know if you would like me to make a separate video on tiling and how you can use it to make larger projects on your CNC router. I'm totally qualified. Anyway, I also had to make the legs for the main panel. Originally the idea was to make them using the same pallet plywood, but since it was delaminating I had to use some of my offcuts. While the CNC was cutting the leg components I decided to go outside and prepare the wall component for painting. But in the middle of the sanding, I realized that there is something nice about the shabby look of the pallet plywood. And the tear outs and other imperfections in a weird way makes it look perfect. So I had to scrap the idea of painting the main panel. So after the sanding and my epiphany, I went back inside to attach the leg components to the wall panel. Now we just had to make 300 sticks for the pins. So I set up our table saw to cut 9mm sheets into smaller ones. Then I could set the fence of the table saw for cutting the smaller sheets into plywood strips for the pins. I had to be very precise with the saw's setup. If I cut the strips too wide, they won't fit in the holes in the pin arts panel. And if the strips were too narrow, the sticks wouldn't hold properly. So I had to get them just right. Since I used a 6mm router bit to cut the main panel, the pinhole cuts had these corner radiuses. That meant I needed to trim all four edges of each pin with a 3mm roundover bit. At first I tried to do it without setting up the router table properly and I realized that this approach won't be as efficient when trimming 1200 edges. So I installed the fence on the router table and attached the anti-kickback components at the fence and on the work table. The anti-kickback attachment not only made the trimming process safer, but it also ensured that each of the edge got trimmed nicely. After running the first pins through our router table setup and testing how well they fit in the base panel, I had to make the first pin tiles. So I loaded a sheet on the CNC router and let it cut the tiles, first by cutting the holes for the pins and after cutting the contour lines. Then I could remove the tiny tiles from the CNC router and test how tight was the pin joint. And it was perfect. So I loaded the next sheet on the CNC router and went back to trimming the edges of the pins. After sliding a couple of dozen pins through the router setup, the next set of tiles was ready. So I removed them from the CNC and attached the next sheet and went back to trimming the edges. 
I went back and forth from the router table to the CNC a couple of times. The amount of small components needed to complete this project was ridiculous. I had to make more than 300 pins and 600 pin tiles and it took quite some time. But after hours of work the finished pins were piling up and the tiny tiles were stacking up as well. After running the last pin to our router table setup I removed all the attachments and trimmed the edges of each tiny tile. It was a little bit risky to trim edges of the components that are that small, but I had to get it done. While doing the task I was mindful of each move that my fingers made to avoid any contact with the rotating trim bit. Anyway, after a couple of hours of trimming the pin tiles were completed and I could install the pins in the main panel. At this point I realized that using old pilot plywood might not have been the best idea. At some segments of the panel the plywood had delaminated and there even were a couple of pin holes with excess veneer blocking the sticks when inserting them in the holes. I was anxious if after all the time spent and the material invested in this project will it even work in the end. But I was too invested and I had to assemble the whole thing to see how it looks. After I had attached all of the tiny tiles on one side of the main panel, I decided to remove the legs of the main frame and place the panel on the workbench. That would allow me to attach the tiny tiles faster. And even without any tiles attached to the other side, the project looked astonishing. I loved how the pins were sticking out, creating this nice rectangular pattern. But I didn't want to spend too much time enjoying the view and got to attaching the tiny tiles. Since the whole panel was sitting on our workbench, I could use the mallet to hammer the tiles into place. This sped up the process quite a bit. In projects where you have to do the same task over and over again, each second saved on each operation can add up quite quickly. In this case, I had to install 300 tiles. This meant if I saved a single second on each tile, I'd save 5 minutes on the assembling. 2 seconds saved on each tile would end up in 10 minutes saved in the total. Finally, all of the pins were in place and we could reattach the leg components and put the pin art wall on the floor. It was smaller than I wanted to make, but it looked remarkable anyway. There was a problem, a major one. It wasn't that easy to slide the pins through the panel. The friction was ok if I had to push one or two of the pins at a time, but it was almost impossible to move 10 or more pins simultaneously. Not gonna lie, at this point I wanted to take a couple of matches and set the pin art panel on fire. We had invested so much time and effort in something that didn't work properly. I had to take a break and I went outside to lay in the grass for a little bit. I wanted to give up, but I realized we have already made 300 pins and we have done most of the work. The only issue was with the main panel. So if we replace that we could make a giant pin art wall and complete the task we set out to complete at the beginning of the video. So I went back into the workshop to make a tiny pin art wall prototype. The idea was to make the pin holes a little bit bigger than the pins and add another wall panel. The bigger size holes would ensure the pins would slide through the panels with less friction and the second wall panel would hold the pins horizontally. After trimming the edges and assembling the test pin art frame, I could attach 16 pins to the prototype. I wanted to see if the distance between the wall components wasn't too small or too big for the pins to stay horizontal, and it turned out perfect. The pins could slide through the wall effortlessly, and I could easily move all of the pins with a single push. It was so satisfying, so I had to make a bigger one. The only problem was that the material that I had in my workshop wasn't big enough to make the pin wall as big as the one we made using the pallet plywood. So I had to take the smaller sheets that I had and cut the wall components using them. While the CNC was cutting the wall component I continued to admire the small prototype and I decided to upload the files for it on our website. So if you would like to make a small tabletop art panel for your home, office or your kids you can get the free DXF files for it at theribabox.com. Also, if you are looking for a way to support our channel, you can get the premium files for the bigger pin art wall we are building right now, or any other of 200 plus premium designs we have on our website. This way you would get cool and useful projects to make on your CNC, 
and support us in making more exciting CNC projects and YouTube videos for you to enjoy. It's a win-win situation and we appreciate all your support and love in the comment section. At this point we have made all the components for the large pin art wall and now we just have to assemble it. I started by joining the two pin panels together. To ensure the wall doesn't come apart when someone is using it, I decided to reinforce the distancer parts with a couple of screws. When the wall was assembled, I had to remove some of the pins from our first pin art wall and attach them to one we are building right now. This was one of my favorite moments during this project. We had spent hours on cutting the pins on the table saw, running the CNC router to make the tiny tiles and trimming the edges of all the small components. And finally, after all the work, we can see the project coming together and this time we are confident it will work. It's a great feeling and the pins and the tiny tiles look so artistic and nice. At this point the only thing left for us to do was attach the leg components and enjoy the result. That's it for today, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.